In this Inkscape video, I'll be demonstrating how to use Inkscape's amazing interpolate extension to create images like the one shown here. For this video, I'll be using Inkscape version 0.48. Before I demonstrate how to make this image, I'm going to show you some of the things that the interpolate extension can do. So I'm going to start by selecting the rectangle tool and I'm going to draw just a simple rectangle here. I'm going to fill it with the color red. And then I'm going to press the Control D key to duplicate this. And then I'm going to go over to the selection tool so I can select it. And I'm going to move this down. I'm going to move it down and off to the side a little bit. And then while this is still selected, I'm going to go up to the first one that I created and I'm going to press the shift key while I hit the left mouse button. And that will allow me to select both of these at the same time. And what I need to do first is to change these into a path. So I can go up to the path menu and select object to path. And now I'm ready to use the interpolate extension. So I just go up to the Extensions menu and then select Generate from Path and then I have a selection called Interpolate. So I'm going to click that and I'm going to leave the Exponent at 0, Interpolation Steps 5, that's okay, and I'm going to use Interpolation Method 2. And Let me move this to the side here. And when I press the Apply button you'll see that these rectangles were duplicated five times. And these new rectangles are all combined together into a single group. So that if I click on this and move it, you'll see that they all move together because they're a group. And if I wanted, I could go up to the Object menu and select Ungroup. And then if I hit the Escape key to unselect everything, then I could go back and use the left mouse button and select any one of these by themselves and move it around. Also notice that it duplicated the original two rectangles that I drew. Let me go ahead and delete these real quick. And if I were to do the same thing again, select this one and then hold the shift key while I select the second one. If I were to uncheck this duplicate end paths and then apply the interpolation, now the group that I get does not include the first two rectangles that I created. And now I want to delete all of these to make some space here. I'm going to go ahead and close this box for now. I'm going to create a circle now. So I'm going to go select the Circle Selection tool. And I'm going to press and hold the left mouse button while I'm also pressing the Control key so that I get a nice circle. And then I'm going to create another circle down here, but this one's going to be larger. And now like before, I need to change both of these circles into a path. So I'm going to go over to the Selection tool and just select both of these. And I'm going to go up to Path, Object to Path. And now I've changed them both into paths. And now I'm going to press the Escape key so that I can deselect both of these circles. And now I want to select the smaller circle first and then I'm going to hold the shift key while I click on the larger one so that both of them can be selected but I'm selecting the larger circle second. So now I'm going to go up to the extensions menu and select generate from path and select interpolate and this time I want to set the number of interpolation steps to 10 and I'm also going to select the duplicate in paths and I will apply that. 
And now you can see that the interpolation extension produced a series of circles, starting with the smallest one because I selected that one first, and ending in the largest one, and the series of circles that it created in between all changed size so that it started from the smallest and they got a little bit bigger until it finally reached the largest size of this circle. So you can start to see the power of this interpolation extension. Now since these new circles are all a single group, I'm going to go ahead and select those and just move them to the side. And now what I want to do is I want to select the larger circle first and then hold the shift key and press the left mouse button to select the smaller circle second. And now if I apply the same interpolation, you'll see that it creates the same series of circles, but it started with the large one and it ended with the smaller circle. So not only can the interpolation extension change the size of a shape, it can also change the shape itself. So to demonstrate that, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to select the square tool and I'm going to draw a square. And I'm going to hold down the control key while I do this so I get a perfect square. And then I'm going to draw a circle. So I'm going to use the circle tool and I'm going to hold the control key so I get a perfect circle here also. And the second circle, I'm going to change its color. And now what I need to do is select both this square and the circle so that I can convert them to a path. So now that I've got them both selected, I'll go up to the Path menu and select Object to Path. And now I want to press the escape key so I can deselect both of these because I want to select them in a particular order. So now I'm going to select the square first and then hold down the shift key and click on the circle so I can select it second. And I'm going to keep the interpolation steps at 10 and I'm going to say apply. And now you can see that this started with a square and it ended with a circle and it slowly changed the shape from a square to a circle as it converted them in the middle. A second thing to notice is that the original circle that I had and I'll move this out of the way a little bit to show you was a different color than the square but all of these new copies are the same color as the original square and that's because I didn't have interpolate style selected. Let me go ahead and delete these copies here and now I'm going to select the square first I'm going to select the circle second and this time I'm going to click the interpolate style checkbox and now when I press the apply button not only does the shape change from a square to a circle, but the color changes from the red color to the brown color. You might notice here that the square rotates as it changes into a circle. This is because the starting node of the square was the top left hand corner and the starting node of the circle was the right side here so it wants to move that starting node from the starting node of the first object to the starting node of the second object. And I'll show you how you can determine which node is the starting node. So I'm going to move this out of the way so that we can get to the original two shapes that I had. So now I'm going to select the square and I'm going to press the Edit Nodes button. And now you'll see that the four nodes that make up this square are displayed. If I press the tab key, you'll see that one of these nodes is now highlighted. And so this node right here that's highlighted, that's the starting node of this square. So I can do the same thing with the circle. I'll select the circle and you'll see the four nodes that are displayed. And I press the tab key 
and you'll see that this node on the right is highlighted. So that's the starting node of the circle. So when you do the interpolation between the square and the circle, it's going to move the starting node of the square to the starting node of the circle. And that's how you can tell ahead of time which way that this is going to rotate or move as it interpolates. And now I'll demonstrate how to use the interpolation extension to create this circle that we have here. So first I'm going to move down to give myself some space to work. And I'm going to start by creating a circle. And I'm holding down the control key so that I get a perfect circle. And for this one, I don't want any fill color in it. So I'm going to go down to the fill box down here. And I'm going to hit the right mouse button and I'm going to select remove fill. And then next I need to convert this to a path. So I'm going to go up to the path menu and select object to path. And then I'm going to use the node edit tool here. I'll press that and you'll see that I have four nodes here. And I want to remove the bottom half of this circle. So I'm going to select this section right here and just left click on it. And then I'm going to press this button right here, which will let me delete this section. And then I'm going to left click on this section here. And I'm going to use this same button so I can delete that section. And so now I have half of a circle. And I'm going to press on the selection tool here. And with this selected, now I'm going to press Control D so that I can make a copy of this. And I'm going to use this flip button right here to flip the copy that I just made. And now this copy, I'm going to use the left mouse button and move this down. And I'll hold the control key while I'm moving it down so I can move it down straight. And I'm going to just try to line these two up. And now I want to select the other half. And so I'll press the shift key while I click on the other half. And now if I go up to extensions and select generate from path and interpolate, I can fill in the middle with copies of the first two lines that I drew. So I'm going to use 15 steps here. And I'm going to click the apply button. And now I have 15 lines that were filled in in the middle here. So now what I want to do is select everything. And I'm going to go up to Object and Group because I want to change this into just a single group. And then I'm going to press Control D to make a copy of this. And then I'm going to press the rotate button so that I can rotate this copy by 90 degrees. So that's how to create this circle image. So as you can see, the interpolation extension has a lot of possibilities. Play around with it and see what you can create. Well, thanks for watching and please subscribe and leave a comment. Have a great day.